I'm beginning to think that passive radiators are one of those overlooked gems in car audio. And if you've been a subscriber to this channel for the last few months, you would notice that I've incorporated passive radiators in a few builds of mine. This will be the official third video that I have incorporated passive radiators. And even though things didn't go exactly as I wanted them to, I'm still having fun with incorporating passive radiators. But if you're new to the channel, I'm the Budget Bass Head, and I kind of specialize in simplifying advanced subwoofer designs. And recently, one of the most favorite type of box to build is those that incorporate passive radiators. But first and foremost, what is a passive radiator? Well, to answer that question, we first must know what a speaker or subwoofer is. A subwoofer is composed of a diaphragm or a cone, a metal basket, a voice coil, and a magnetized motor structure. And when it receives an electrical signal, an opposing magnetic field is created, causing the cone of the subwoofer to move up and down. And this is basically how it makes sound. The average weight of a 12 inch subwoofer for car audio ranges from 25 to 45 pounds. And the average power of a subwoofer for car audio ranges from 500 to 1000 watts. Most car audio systems incorporate a ported enclosure, which requires more space to take up in the vehicle than a sealed enclosure. However, most car audio enthusiasts prefer the sound of a ported enclosure, mainly due to its low frequency extension and efficiency. It doesn't take a lot of power to make sound. But the problem with this design is that most vehicles don't have that much space that is actually needed for that powerful base, which is why some manufacturers have started building enclosures that incorporate passive radiators. And in this video, I choose to use passive radiators by a company called Earthquake Sounds. These are the SLAPS M12 passive radiators and it's part of their SLAP series of passive radiators. These passive radiators are actually lighter than traditional passive radiators because the design of them have eliminated the subwoofer basket. They are also tunable with the ability to add and remove weights from the rear of the cone. The cone itself is made up of a durable heavy duty plastic material and is supported by a high roll rubber surround that allows this thing to move an astonishing four inches in mechanical travel. The enclosure that I build here is actually modified from the previous passive radiator video that I did. That enclosure only had one active driver paired with a passive radiator. Well, I've cut another hole in the side of it and now each active driver have two passive radiators. According to all of my measurements, I predict that this enclosure should easily get a 150 dB and beyond. Okay, so right now we're over here in SketchUp, and what you guys are looking at right now is a 3D representation of the trunk of my 2018 Chevy Impala. The 2018 Chevy Impala has approximately 18 cubic foot of cargo volume, and this is what I'm going to be utilizing to build the enclosure. And right here you see that representation of that enclosure that I modified and once again it is 2.75 cubic foot total and that's 1.25 cubic foot after displacement for each active driver. This is a very small enclosure, only takes up 15% of the cargo area and that saves you about 85% of available trunk space. So let's think about that. Where else can you install six 12 inch drivers? and two and a half cubic foot, nowhere. All right, so <clears throat> these are gonna be the subwoofers that I'm gonna be using. These are uh, NVX VCW-12s. This is version two of them. They now have a version three out. No other subwoofer I have played as flat as these right here did with a, plastic, a passive radiator. So I get the SPL, that I wanted and I get the response curve that I wanted using these subwoofers right here. These are some really good quality subwoofers. I don't know why they're so cheap. I got them right now wired in uh, parallel. These are uh, dual tools. 
I got them wired in parallel, so each one of them is one on. Then I'm gonna wire them in parallel again, down to what is supposedly a half on. All right, guys, so once again, we're back here in the Impala, and we're gonna be testing out my new base box. All right, so in order to do so, I gotta introduce you guys to some of the equipment that we're gonna be using. In the kick down there is my mini base meter by SPL Lab. That is what we're gonna be using to measure our decibel scores. Okay, that's our SPL scores. And SPL scores, of course, is measured in decibels. If you guys wanna see what my ambient decibel reading is in this environment, we got about 100, it's about 120 decibels because I, I keep my AC running through all my tests. Every test you've ever seen here on the channel, my AC is always running. So that's why you always see that 120 on there. Um, to measure our power output, we're gonna be using the AMM1 by Steve Mead Designs. This is a multimeter for audio equipment, okay? It's an audio multimeter. And this is a partnership between Steve Mead and DeMore Engineering. Okay, this is one of their babies. He got some really good equipment. And this is one that I use in every video. And for the power, we're gonna be using the Taramps Smart 8 Base. Okay, so basically what this thing is, it's an 8,000 watt IMS uh, subwoofer amplifier. And it's actually capable of giving you, delivering that 8,000 watt continuously in between a 0.5 and two ohm impedance load. Very, very smart technology. And that's why I bought it. It's a pretty good tool. So what we're gonna do here is get our equipment set up to capture our base sweep and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so this is the application that I'm gonna be using. This is something you can check out in the Google Play Store. So we're gonna be sweeping it from 150 hertz down to 20 hertz. It's gonna be a 30 second uh, base sweep. Here we go. And that's 20 hertz. And as you guys can see, that was only 257 watts at 0.8 ohms. Okay. So in the kick, we have a 132.3, but that's not the metric that we want. Okay, we always do our base sweep at very low volume, and that's why you got a low score here. What we wanna see is at what frequency did it get that high decibel reading because this is the highest decibel reading at that frequency that it can achieve in this environment. So let's check it out. 47 Hertz. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing our burp test at. So we're gonna test it at 47 Hertz because that's what it's calling for. We're gonna also test it at other frequencies, but 47 Hertz goes first. The reason I'm gonna do this first is because you don't wanna heat the coil up before you actually test what it actually called for, which is 47 Hertz. That's what we're gonna be doing. All right, so we got everything reset. This is set to 47 Hertz that has been reset to zero. So what we're gonna be doing is very simple. I'm just gonna turn this thing all the way up. This is the amplifier gain control. It's maxed out. I'm gonna turn my volume down. I'm gonna creep into this 47 hertz uh, test tone and see how much my subwoofers can handle. And then we'll check our SPL score after that. So we're gonna hit start. That's 47 hertz. And we're gonna keep an eye on our power from the SPL lab. And there we are. Let's go. And 
that was 5,734 watts at 0.9 ohms of impedance. And in the kit we have, there it is, 144.4. All right, we got everything reset. And what we're gonna be doing now is a test tone at 30 Hertz. We're gonna run through the other frequencies and see what we gain, <clears throat> what kind of scores we can get at those. So this is 30 Hertz. Please forgive the shaky video, guys. I'm all by myself with this. So here we go. 30 Hertz. Woo! Hey. All right, so that was 3,799 watts at 0.9 ohms of resistance. All right, let's stop this. And we got a 139.1. This is what we got out of that, a 139.1. All right, so next up is gonna be 35 hertz. Let's try this again. 35 hertz. It's 5,886 watts at 1.1 ohm of impedance. We got a 142.9. All right, 40 hertz. So we got 5,934 watts at 1.3 ohms of resistance. I right, stop this. They gave us a 144.9. 144.9. That's what we got in the kick. So let's go up to 45 hertz. All right, 45 hertz. One forty-five point nine. Why is my light on? All right, so that was at five thousand five hundred and four watts at one ohm of impedance. Man, that shook one of my nails out my uh, my amp brackets. My amp had just come dislodged from my amp board. Look at this. It's shaking. It just dislodged itself. So I say that was that that's it for this test. <laughs> I don't want that thing falling down. I, I better fix that guys. Let, let me go fix that. Wow. Didn't expect that at all. So that that explains. That explains the low scores because this is a fail. That's a fail. So that explains why the scores wasn't as high as expected because these got them, damn, I gotta rethink this quick. Now, what I want you guys to do in this portion of the video is pay attention to the passive radiator in the background. Uh, because the enclosure is facing the trunk for optimum unloading, I did not catch this during the time of the filming. 30 hertz. And I did continue to test, but as you guys can see, the passive radiator is completely unloading. It is reaching full mechanical potential uh, exceeding it to be honest with you and I hey. do believe that 
the sound that I was hearing was not the, the voice call ticking of the subwoofers. I believe what we was hearing the whole time was the weight of the passive radiator slapping against the magnet of the subwoofers that's installed in this enclosure. This is completely my fault. This is a design flaw on the part of the installer, which is me. I do not blame the company for this. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Base here and I'm out.